while I was in like like most of you I had an ability much more than the average man the average student I had the ability to cram I've not seen a human being that can cram like me right those days the organic chemistry organic chemistry 101 102 203 303 and recite it recite it so, stay with me stay with me stay with me yes I'm telling you my own personal story there was a time I wanted to cram the entire New Testament and just lift it so that maybe I will not need to be cross-checking my Bible and I had the mental capacity to achieve that so I don't read until maybe a test come for the exam I can write the entire notebook for you. I did it sometimes and they felt I was cheating so they, they, they now brought me and placed me in the front. I still reproduced books, reproduced. I used to tell my colleagues those days that they were all cursed because they studied so much and they can't retain. I say it's a sign of a curse. There was no man as proud as I was and I was proud of my mental ability. That whether you were white or black, Indian or Sibian, if I sit with you in class, I will beat you. And um, that's how it is. We are not the same. <laughs> I got by with that for, for some time and I was even a preacher. In fact, on campus, before I preach to you, I will tell you how I'm doing academically so that you know that I am excelling. So sit down and listen. I have something to tell you. <laughs> oh my God. And I used to do, I had, I had concordances. When concordances were not common, my first study Bible was Dick's Annotated Reference Bible. So when I finish doing my research in scripture and I'm talking, you will know, you, you, you have to hear me, you, you need to hear me. Somebody was going somewhere, he heard me preaching. He had to, he forgot. It was when, after about one hour, I, ah! I had confidence in what I could achieve if I open the scripture and I bring my research. By the time I give you the historical perspective, tell you the significance of purple in that scripture. And the Hebrew word that supports it. I would oh, when I you will say, hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, I attended a prayer meeting. And in the prayer meeting. The prayer point was let us ask the Lord to take us, all of us. So I was manipulated into praying that such prayer. After I prayed that prayer, God took me serious, even though I didn't mean it. When I left that place, everything changed. The next exam I was supposed to write, I took the book, I crammed it like as usual. And I went into the exam hall and forgot it. That was my first carryover. It is a taboo for me to have carryover. It's a taboo. Guess what? The next exam again, I crammed it, I entered into the exam hall, I forgot everything. I had carryover. For, it happened for five core courses. And the implication of that is that I can no longer graduate with my mates because it happened at the wrong time. Are you there?
And guess what? When I come out of the exam hall, I'll remember everything. Before the exam hall, I can be quoting it. I'll just call somebody to intimidate my classmates. I will call somebody and then I'll begin to recite the notebook. They said I was using genie, genie, genies to the, that genies were, were whispering to me. The genie died. I went to the score sheet and I saw my result. Well, you see, for you, for you, if you have a carryover, it doesn't mean anything to you. That's not where the nerve of the strength of your flesh is. For everyone that is seated here, there is a super nerve that your flesh rests on. And the Holy Spirit knows that this. It's a good soldier. <laughs> Psycho Barima. For me, the nerve upon which my flesh was resting on was my intellectual capacity. I felt I had that more than every living man. And that was a matter of pride to me. Because I come from a family of scholars. My dad made first class. So if you are scoring 70 you say oh my god you guys you guys are you are weak <laughs> hallelujah so because of the way he talks to us i had this superiority complex that was predicated on my ability to retain and i got by for a for a season until I was manipulated to pray that prayer. Oh Jesus. Take me. Do what you want with me. For your information. We will be praying such prayers this night. You are not under obligation to pray. It causes problems. Such prayers. Cause. But I was not warned. The way I am warning you now. Take over. <laughs> ah! And he, he took me seriously. I'm not sure it took any other person seriously in that place. Just me. For the first time I will study, enter the hall, blank, 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 blank. That's how Jesus Christ. It hurt my pride. Because the same people I boasted to had an occasion to criticize me and say are you not the one that there was pressure on the nerve that the flesh was resting on me and because that was where my confidence was I could not see life life did not exist for me outside my academic victories do you understand that i don't know i don't understand that life of failure hey it's death it happened for five major causes and my gp dropped considerably the idea was to make a first class and go straight for a PhD. Finish the PhD before I'm 30 years old. And then, because I like knowledge, I like it. If we, if we, are, if me and you are to go to the farm and farm, you, you will be better. So I will not go there. But in the, in the ivory tower, where they trade this knowledge. The pressure was intense. I couldn't prove that I was a scholar anymore. Then I went to God one night in prayer and said, Can you consider taking me home? Because this matter we are talking about, your flesh will react and, and you will prefer death than to continue the way you are going. He said, Brethren, I will not want you to be ignorant. 
of what happened to us in Asia. He said we were pressed out of nation. I watched my GP drop like a coin. People insulted me for long. Every morning, people would discuss. There are new words with which they will insult me. In fact, a time came and I said, Jesus, I can't preach again because I can't prove that I'm successful. Because the license with which, the ticket with which I preach those days is to tell you, hey, calm down, calm down. What's your GP? This is where I am. So, sit down, sit down. You need to. I have something. I lost that ticket. So I couldn't fathom the ground upon which I could now stand to preach. Are you there? I fasted. I fasted. I fast because you know when there's a challenge and you need intervention quickly, you go dry. I went. Instead of intervention, the GP dropped more. Those days, the football field, you have a football field here on this camp. A football field was my prayer ground. I would move from one goal post to another goal post, one goal post to another goal post, one goal post till the break of day. When I go again, the GP will drop. Until the time came when it was better for me to either die, leave school. Those were better options than to remain and face. Meanwhile, what was happening was that my pride was suffering loss. I never knew that God had the courage to subject his, his precious ones to such pressure. I was pressed beyond measure. I did not have capacity to bear what I was going through. I was pressed above strength. I could no longer prove that I was a scholar. In one of those days, as I was praying on the field, what I was telling Jesus was that, uh, you know I can't preach again because I have no message. Those were the days of success motivational preaching are you there that's when he came out newly so we're the first disciples of the success preaching so and part of what you need to put on the table to qualify to speak to people is your own success i see fully and uh, since we were in the academic field my academic success was going to be my legitimacy then the time came I couldn't prove that I was a scholar and I, I was discussing with Jesus how he should give me another assignment one that is more quiet that doesn't expose you that uh, not pulpit ministry then he spoke to me all those times I did night vigil on the football field he didn't speak until that day he said, now you are ready to be my preacher. I said, I'm resigning. There's nothing to preach anymore. He said, yes, there's nothing in you to preach anymore, but I am the object of preaching. Preach me. Every man that goes to Asia comes back with a different understanding. Before you go to Asia, your confidence is in yourself, your ability, what you can achieve, your talent, how you are better than other people. But by the time you survive Asia and the pressure has made its toll upon you, then you realize how limited the infrastructure that you were hoping to place your the weight of your life upon how, how weak that infrastructure is. It becomes the ground upon which you can no longer trust in yourself but in God that can raise the dead.